Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams and thank you for coming back for another episode of Let's Clean Out My Shelves. <laughs> this is a series I've been doing for probably, I don't know, when I started it. There are a ton of other videos where I take my shelves little by little and I go through them to see if I want the old books that are on that shelf to organize and to clean out what is there. And today we are gonna be doing that with this shelf that lives here in my living room. This is a mishmash of a bunch of different things. What used to be, down on the bottom was my Jane Austen inspired books. So they're all like retellings or about her life. We'll go over those in just a moment. On this shelf here, I have a little combination of Ella Montgomery and Anne of Green Gables on these two shelves. And I think I'm gonna keep them here, but I'm gonna, this one's getting a little full. So I'm gonna spread them out onto these two. And I can tell you already, I am going to be taking all of these Gilmore Girls box sets and taking them to Second and Charles because I don't even have a DVD player anymore. So there's no point in me keeping them. They occasionally go on streaming services. I don't know if they are right now, but I am gonna go ahead and unhaul this whole series of Gilmore Girls. Even though I love them, I'm not obsessed. <laughs> I think I went through them all once and that was it. So. I don't know, I thought I needed to own them at one point, but I don't, I don't need to own them. So those are gonna go away and element, or the Ella Montgomery stuff is gonna spread out. I think I'm gonna put some photo albums down on the bottom because these Christian nonfiction, I'm gonna move out to my nonfiction shelf and move those photo albums down on the bottom where I don't need to get at them regularly, but they can have a place to live down there. Spread out Ella Montgomery and I think this top shelf here might be I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna put on that top shelf I was debating about doing book of the month that I have read and want to keep I'm not sure I'm gonna keep all of those ones so we'll go over those that's what this pile here is book of the month so I'm gonna go through those with you see if I need to keep any of those and then I have a lot more book of the month over on another shelf that I could probably bring and just kind of populate this shelf with book of the month that I'm gonna keep that would look nice all together. So that's what we're gonna do. But first I'm gonna go ahead and go through all of my Jane Austen inspired books. I have quite a few. We're gonna see which ones I'm going to keep, which ones I'm gonna go ahead and let go of. Some I've read, some I haven't, some I don't even know if I've read it or not. I know on when I look at my Goodreads of my own TBR shelf, often the lowest rated books on my Goodreads are <laughs> some of these Jane Austen retellings. So I'm not sure I need to keep all of these. And I think I have more in the other room actually that need to come out or need to join these, but I don't want them down there. I don't know where I'm gonna put them. Let's just go through them first. We have Longborn by Joe Baker. I'm gonna unhaul this. I did read it. It was okay. I didn't love it. I do think I liked this one, First Impressions, a contemporary retelling of Pride and Prejudice by Deborah White Smith. They've done this cover again. I think the first time I read it, the covers were pretty hideous. <laughs> and I remember enjoying this book, so I am gonna keep this one. Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy by Abigail Reynolds, The Last Man in the World. I'm gonna unhaul this. I think this is one of the ones that is pretty low rated on Goodreads. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul that. I've had it for quite a while and never reached for it. By the book by Julia Sonneborn. I'm gonna keep, I for now, I have read this one. It's a persuasion retelling and persuasion is my favorite Jane Austen. I just don't, I don't think I loved this one, but I might wanna read it one more time and then decide if I'm gonna keep it or not. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. We have Mr. Darcy's Dream by Elizabeth Aston, author of Mr. Darcy's Daughters. I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul this one. I just, again, have had it for a really long time and never reached for it. <laughs> Persuasion, Captain Wentworth and Cracklin Cornbread by Mary Jane Hathaway. I believe she has a series of a couple of these Southern retellings of some of some of Jane Austen's work. So I am gonna keep this one. It was a cute one. I do have Austin Land and Midnight in Austin Land. I don't think I'm gonna keep, I maybe I'll keep Austin Land because I really did enjoy this one, but I don't think I really cared for the sequel, but I can see myself rereading Austin Land. So I'm gonna keep Austin Land, but go ahead and unhaul Midnight in Austin Land. We have a Western retelling of Pride and Prejudice. This is Pemberley Ranch. And it's also set during this, no, this is not Western. This is set during the Civil War. The, the Bennett family moves from Ohio to Rosings, Texas. 
Will Darcy was a Confederate officer back from the war, owns half the land around Rosings. I think I'm going to unhaul this one. I've just never reached for that. The Perfect Bride for Mr. Darcy by Mary Lydon Simonson. She's one that I think has written qu a cup, quite a few retellings. I don't know. I feel like my era of wanting to read these retellings has passed. I just never reach for these, possibly because they're way down on the bottom shelf. But even as I'm holding these up, I'm like, I just don't think I ever want to read that. So it's getting unhauled. I think I did read this one. Mr. Darcy Broke My Heart. I'm unhauling this. Beth Matillo. It was cute, but I, yeah, I'm never going to reread it. Dreaming of Mr. Darcy is another Pride and Prejudice modern day retelling. This one has had some water damage. It is pretty beat up. <laughs> unhauling that one. Let's see. Definitely not Mr. Darcy by Karen Dornabos. Pride takes a hit in this Austin misadventure. A lively, engaging tale of a modern woman faced with the amusingly in inelegant reality of Regency life. Okay, so this is a Jane Austen inspired TV show set in England. So I think I'll hold on to this one. It sounds like it's going to be just like Austin Land, sort of, except a, a, a TV show rather than like a vacation type of thing. But I'll hold on to that. Why not? Oh, here's another one of those Southern retellings. This one is Emma, Mr. Knightley, and Chili Slaw Dogs. So I think I have not read this one. I did. I know I've read the Persuasion one, but I don't think I've read the Emma retelling. So I will keep that one as well. Siri James is another popular Austin retelling person. So this one is the missing manuscript of Jane Austen. I'm going to hold on to this. I also am going to keep this one, The Lost Memories of Jane Austen, also by Siri James. Untold Story of a Love Affair of Jane Austen, some lost memoirs, so I'm going to hold on to that. I Was Jane Austen's Best Friend by Cora Harrison. I'm going to go ahead and unhaul. This is one that is told in diary format, and it's a YA. I just don't think I need to keep that one. I am going to keep this one. This is a nonfiction, A Walk with Jane Austen, A Journey into Adventure, Love, and Faith by Laurie Smith. So we're going to walk through some of the different places in Jane Austen's books like Bath and Lyme and London and Hampshire. And it's a Christian nonfiction. So I'll hold on to that one. I am keeping this one as well, Lost in Austin by Emma Cam Campbell Webster. This one is a create your own Jane Austen adventure. So it's like you, <laughs> you get to decide different things. Remember those choose your own adventure books when you were little? When I was little, I had used to love those. It's kind of like a game as well. Add Mr. Wickham to your list of superior connections. Add poorly timed liveliness to your extensive list of failings. Deduct 10 intelligence points for continuing in your willful prejudice. And then you get to choose to accept his application, go to page 118. To reject, go to page 96. So it's kind of a fun twist on Jane Austen inspired retelling. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that one. I am going to unhaul Mr. Darcy's Little Sister by C. Allen Pearson. That one I'm not going to keep as well as The Man Who Loved Jane Austen by Sally Smith O'Rourke. I'm going to unhaul that one and Searching for Pemberley by Mary, Lynn, Mary Lydon Simonson. I'm going to unhaul that as well. So I'm getting rid of the majority of my Jane Austen books. So I think these that I'm keeping can find a spot in, the, in my library room or somewhere else in this room. They're just not going to go on this shelf down at the bottom anymore. I'm going to put things down at the bottom that I don't need to get at regularly. But I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera and go ahead and show you what's on the top shelf and on my Ella Montgomery shelves as well. Well, this one is just the box set, which I'm most definitely keeping. Um, but I'll show you the top two shelves and we'll see what this shelf looks like at the end. So let's turn the camera around. Okay, we'll start here with the top shelf. This is a nonfiction Christian series about all of these people in the Bible. I have all but book six. Apparently, I need to get book six. But that's David, Esther, Joseph, Moses, Elijah, Job. Fascinating, fascinating stories of forgotten lives. And Jesus is the last one. These two are gift books, actually. I found these at a library book sale for a dollar a piece in their devotionals based on science. One of these is going to go to my little buddy for his birthday because I think they will really enjoy those. I'll slide those there and put this little jar of coins. Oh, that's heavy. Put that up here as well. Add that to the top shelf. Um, I have a little candle here. Just set that up here for now as well. Okay, 
Then here are some book of the month books that I have read. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I really enjoyed that one. I'm going to keep it. I love Catherine Center. Keeping that. Keeping Project Hail Mary. Beach Read is one Emily Henry that I did actually enjoy. So I will keep that. The Holiday Swap, I don't remember loving. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul that one as well as this New Year's one this time next year. I thought it was cute, I think, but I don't feel like I need to ever read it again. So I'll unhaul that one. Things You Save in a Fire is a Catherine Center that I'm going to keep. And One to Watch, I think was fun. I don't remember. It's like a plus size bachelorette type of a book. Um, I'm going to keep it because I can see myself rereading that one, actually. So those are the top shelf. I'll rearrange in a moment. Then we come down here to my Ella M Montgomery stuff. I have this pot that I like. Little tea kettle. <laughs> and this is a one of those um, wax melt warmers. Okay, so this is a gifted book. Someone gifted this to me. This is Anne of Green Gables with the painted cover. Who published this? Harper Muse. It's beautiful and I love it. I'm definitely keeping that. I have my original. Okay, let's see. This is the, what is this edition? Tundra editions of Anne of Green Gables. I have so far Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea. I would love to collect the whole series in these editions. I think they're super cute. Um, I might put all my Anne books down on this shelf. Then I have some other Ella Montgomery. Let's see. This one is Kilmany of the Orchard, which I've heard isn't the best, but I've not read it yet. It's a really thin one. So I'm going to read that. I've got the Blue Castle, which I do love. Um, After Many Days is a collection of short stories as well as akin to Anne. So I'm keeping those short stories. Let's see. That thing is plugged in, so I can't really move it very far. But this is a this is the Puffin and Bloom edition of Anne of Green Gables. So cute. So I'm keeping that down with my Anne books. I've got Christmas with Anne, which is short stories. The Anne of Green Gables devotional there, which is sweet. And then this is the my original. It's kind of out of order right now, but my original set of the mass market paperbacks of Anne of Green Gables, which I first read and read and reread. So I love those. I have Pat of Silver Bush and A Tangled Web, neither of which I have read yet. I have Before Green Gables, which is not by Ella Montgomery. It's by Br Budge Wilson, but I really enjoyed it. It's Anne's life before she comes to Green Gables. Obviously, it's called Before Green Gables. I really enjoyed it. It's going to stay here with my Anne books. Then we have Chain of Lantern Hill, which I read and loved. The Blythes are quoted. It's so beautiful. Um, just quotes and some short stories put together there. Um, Mistress Pat in the Tundra. This is the Tundra edition of Mistress Pat, which is, I don't know which one comes first, Mistress Pat or Pat of Silverbush. But those two go together. Oh no, I'm losing stuff. I just dropped a whole ton off the back. Holy moly. Um, let me get the ones that are here. Emily of New Moon, House of Dreams is a middle grade biography of Ella Montgomery's life. The Anne of Green Gables cookbook, which is just really lovely. Love that. And also I've read this one, The Landscapes of Green Gables, which is also beautiful uh, by Catherine Reed. So let me get the ones that fell and then try to organize these a little bit as well. All right, real quick. Here's the ones that fell. I have Emily's Quest and Emily Climbs. And these are in the source book fire. This is just an Amazon printing, I guess. I think that's what those are. And I have Emily of New Moon in the same edition. And then these are the Tundra editions of Story Girl and Golden Road, which is the sequel to the Story Girl. I love the Tundra editions. Oh, they're so pretty. All right, so now I need to dust and get these shelves resituated. I will be back and show you how this shelf looks at the end. Okay, change of plans. This shelf is gonna become Agatha Christie. <laughs> I feel like that fits. I'm actually gonna probably move Anne of Green Gables up to the top two and put Agatha Christie down on the third one. 
because I like Ella Montgomery a little better. But this pile, hold on. But this pile is all of my red book of the month that I think I want to keep. There's way too many to fit on just one shelf. So see this little shelf over here? I started moving stuff off of it already. This middle one here with those rainbow books, that's Agatha Christie. So that's gonna come over to this shelf. These Harry Potter ones are gonna stay, but everything else is gonna go somewhere else. And so the top three shelves of this will become book of the month. So let's take a look at this little shelf while I'm making this choice right now. Let me turn my camera around. Nothing is getting unhauled from this shelf. I plan on keeping all of these. So we have this Jane Austen set of her six novels that I'm keeping. I love these editions. I have these children's classics that I'm keeping. I've got Call of the Wild, Robin Hood, The Secret Garden, A Little Princess, The Wizard of Oz, and Peter Pan. They just look really pretty all together. All of this half is Agatha Christie. So that's gonna go over to the other shelf. These Kate Morton books are just gonna go back into the library room. There's only the four here. I don't know if I have any other ones, but there's those four. Down here, I have the Lord of the Rings. Actually, I am going to unhaul that because I don't like them. I find them boring. And I probably am going to unhaul the Hunger Games series as well. I can get them very easily from the library. It's been a long time since I've read them. And then Harry Potter is going to stay down at the bottom. So this shelf is going to become Book of the Month. Oh, I'm into it now. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, before I show you the finished product, I found one more stack of Jane Austen books. So we need to go through these real quick to see if I'm keeping them or getting rid of them. So we have possibilities. I'm keeping this one. Sanditon, definitely keeping that. A Wife for Mrs. Darcy, Unhauling. Dangerous Alliance by Jennifer Jen Jenicky. I don't know how to say that. Cohen, keeping that one. Jane Austen's Lost Letters, Unhauling. Lizzie and Jane by Catherine Ray and The Austin Escape by Catherine Ray, I'm keeping. So I'm going to go add these to the shelf and then I'll show you the final products. Okay, this is my pile that I'm unhauling from the two shelves that I got done today. Woohoo, that's a good pile to unhaul. All right, this is the shelf I started doing today. Didn't know I was going to end up doing two shelves, but here we have at the top just a couple of tchotchke things and some gift books, all my Anne books, plus some of the nonfiction over here. So the two full series that I have, and then I found my Owl's Nest publishing one that is edited by Katie, my dear friend, and the two beautiful editions there. Then we have the rest of my Ella Montgomery and Ella Montgomery related books. Then down here, I moved all my Agatha Christie books. And then at the bottom, I have a basket of book sleeves as well as some photo albums. So this shelf is now organized and beautiful and I love it. And then flipping around to the other side of the room, I did keep my Harry Potter stuff down below. I have my first, the five illustrated editions plus the hardcover set there. And then this is where I ended up putting my Jane Austen books. They all fit nicely on that shelf there, including the six books of hers, plus Sanditon and other stories, and then some retellings and stuff. And then on the top two shelves, I have my red book of the month books. There's not much room to add more. So I think, I mean, I have a little bit of room. I can add some more as I read more. I mean, especially with catch up -a -thon coming up, I could move out bomb shelter and the house is on fire because they don't have the logo or, and this tender land. They don't have that book of the month label on it, even logo, even though they are book of the month books, but I just, I just simply sorted these by rainbow according to the book of the month token. So that's how I ended up doing it. I probably could do it differently, but for now, I think that looks really pretty. I like them and I love how this shelf looks overall. So this turned into a lot more than I expected when I first started this morning and in the mo in the middle of everything, my, my phone battery totally died. I forgot that it was low. And so I had to go charge that for a half hour. But I'm really pleased that two of my shelves in my living room are now done. I think they look really nice. I'm very, very pleased with them. And yeah, thank you for coming along for this journey. I'll give you a little sneak peek over in this corner. Let me see if I can turn this. Over in that corner is another shelf of red books. And 
I have one more across across from that by the door is another shelf that has some red books and the bottom half I keep my pango books but on the top half are some more red books that are they're not organized at all um, but they're ones that I've pretty much decided I want to keep they're just all stuffed in there so more to come in this series I know many of you are really enjoying it and I'm enjoying it because it's making my shelves look much better. By the time I'm done, I'm going to be ready to go back to the beginning and cull even more because my shelves in my library room are already getting overflowing. But that is a story for another day. Today we are done with this and I'm really pleased. I really love how it all looks and I'm, I'm just really happy to have that done. I didn't expect to do all that today, but there we go. I would love to chat with you down below about anything that you saw today or just you want to say hi. I would love to talk with you in the comments below. I'm trying to get caught up on my comments. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.